Hello to all my artsy friends. I have three spring Kirkland's dupes for you, so let's get started on the first one. I loved the look of this floral arrangement. It is so pretty for spring, but instead of paying $20, we are going to make one for only $3. I had ordered some washable makeup remover pads from Amazon and this box was so sturdy that I decided to save it for a DIY. I've had these miter shears for a while and I love how they make cutting angles so easy. We'll be using these to cut some wide craft sticks, but they are so thin that you could probably get away with using just scissors. So I measured, trimmed, and sanded any rough edges as I went along, and then attached these craft sticks to the box with a bit of hot glue. It's been a while since I've done any dupes videos. If you haven't heard of dupes, what I do is copy high-end home decor from places like Kirkland's, Ballard Design, Pottery Barn, West Elm, and Restoration Hardware and I try to duplicate the items as closely as possible and for as cheap as possible. It's always a fun challenge and super satisfying to see how close of a copycat I can make. The top of that box had the indentation, so I had to double or maybe I ended up tripling the amount of craft sticks needed to make it the same depth as the rest of the box. Then I added the two sticks onto the sides. I did this on the rest of the sides of the box. And then I gave this a coat of white paint. I only did one light coat because I wanted the wood grain to show through. Next, I mixed up some brown, gold, and a touch of black paint. I found these little dome-like stickers at Dollar Tree, and we're going to paint them to look like nails. I let these dry overnight. They do have a sticker on the back, but sometimes when you pull them off the sheet, the sticker doesn't come with it. <laughs> So for those instances, I just used a tiny dab of hot glue to secure it down. A bit of greenery and this dupe is complete. Here are the prices for the items we used. And here is the comparison. What a savings and it looks pretty close to the Kirkland's version. On to the next dupe. 
This wreath is so pretty and really gorgeous for spring. I love the pink and white flowers, but I don't love that price. Let's see how we can make this for only $10. I recently organized my craft storage and I did a video on that if you're interested. So I had this container I wasn't using for anything, but it ended up being perfect for my Dollar Tree hula skirt. I've been harvesting the raffia off of this hula skirt for a few projects now. The strings are just looped around some rope so I unlooped them until I had enough for this project. I taped down four strings of that raffia and we are going to do a four strand braid. Now, if you wanted to do just a regular three strand braid, I think that would work well too. But I wanted to do four because I thought it would really bulk up the strands and the four strand braid would give it the same look as the Kirkland's version. We'll see how it works out. You basically take the two outer strings and cross them in the middle. Keep repeating that over and over again, taking the outer strings and crossing them over each other in the center. I squished down the braid and tried to flatten it a bit so it would be easier to wrap around our hoop and take up more surface area. I think I found that hoop at Michael's in the floral section. I am going to use a touch of hot glue to secure the beginning and the end of our strand. I wrapped this around and am really happy with how it looks. I'm going to go almost all the way around because we won't need to do the part that the florals are going to go over. Then I popped the rest of that hula skirt back into that jar. Keeps it nice and tidy. Okay, now for the fun part, which is arranging the flowers onto the hoop. I kept referencing the photo of the Kirkland's one as I went along because I was trying to copy it as closely as possible. I used some Dollar Tree floral wire to secure everything in place. For the flowers, I just wrapped their stems right around the hoop, and then I hid any wire or stems by pulling up the greenery over it.
Here are the prices for everything we used to make the wreath. And here is the comparison. Looks pretty close to me. I love the minimalist look of this pebble wall art, and I also think it's perfect for spring with the natural element. But for $70, well, I think we can do better than that. If you have pebbles around your house, this part will be free for you and way cheaper than how I made it. I had to go buy some pebbles on Amazon, I think for like 10 or $11 to get the right sizes. And I picked out the small flat stones and also looked for the most neutral colors since the Kirkland's one uses mostly white and beige pebbles. This shadow box frame came in a set of three and is already the right color for our project, so no painting needed. Now see those wood pieces along the edge of my frame? If you wanted to transform a deep regular frame into a shadow box, all you would need to do is cut some foam core to fill in the edges and then your frame mat would sit behind that to create the illusion of a shadow box. I cut a branch off of one of my trees and glued it into place. It is tucked under one corner, so that made the other three corners not at the same height. I used uh, those little domed stickers that I got from Dollar Tree to add height to the rest of the corners. Then I just attached the stones with some glue. My pebbles were really lightweight, so hot glue worked on them. But if you are using heavier stones or making this a bit bigger, then you may want to use something a little bit stronger like E6000. Here are the prices for the items we used on this pebble wall art. And here is my version next to the Kirkland's one. What do you guys think? Don't forget to subscribe so you'll know when my next DIYs get posted and click that bell so you don't miss any bonus videos that are coming up in the middle of the week. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a creative day. Bye.